and wet. I was going to take you out here to my hood. Some folks have been asking what kind of stuff I use to uh, nap with. I'll just show you. I got a real extensive tool kit. That's in the morning. Anyway, here's what I got going on. Here's some stuff that I spalled out the other day out of some, uh, some of this material I've been using. And here's what I've been using to spall it with. This is actually an artifact. I bought it with a bunch of stuff at an auction one time and it had a big chunk already busted off of it. But it's just a real heavy piece of limestone and I've, I've done that damage to it. But I've used it for grinding with it and just different things, but mainly trying to spoil this hornstone. And, and what I've got is big chunks. That weighs about probably two pounds. But here's what I'm faced with. Of course, you can see right there is just great material. But to get into it is just a crisis. Because all this side right here is, when I hit that big chunk, all this right here uh, actually was a line that went through it and it just broke out in, in blocks. But most of it's got that kind of Gore-Tex on it and that's about an inch thick right there. Maybe not so much an inch, but I've got some that's nearly two inches thick and it's coated in that and it's real soft and so it's just it's just real difficult to get into and most of the time I end up with something like that or something that you can't use and of course with something like that you're gonna end up you know with a lot of this you know that you really can't do a lot with unless you're making bird points and whatnot you know when you thin it down uh, but anyway a lot of them slice you half and two right there and then you get your bigger ones you know that you end up and I, I try to hang on to some of them of course they curled and bent and twisted and every which way some of them you can some of them you can't use but anyway on to what I primarily use of course here's one of my boppers that's an inch and three quarters I rarely use it I do some, you know, when you when you when you're trying to get these right here on down there a little bit. I use them a few minutes, and then from there I go with this one. This one's got to be redone. It's it's coming loose. This is an inch and a quarter, I think. Broom handle or hoe handle or something. But here is my main one. That's three quarters. Filled about halfway full of lead and put on there with Gorilla Glue. But that's what I do almost all of pressure flaking with once I get it down to a hand size piece. Because this hornstone, it you know, it'll you can crush it if you use something too heavy. And then I got, you know, the common little bitty pressure flaker. And that's copper wire wound tight enough to break which changes the molecular structure or that if I tell you say that stiffening it up some go over here I moved some stuff over here where I could see better what I was doing here's the other one I got I use it most often it ain't long enough really to be an issue stick and it's too short to be a handheld little deal but I can still get more leverage with it than I can the little handheld deal. But it's the same thing going on right here. Number four copper wire wound tight. Put one end in a drill, one end in your vise, and wind it and wind it and wind it. Turn your drill on, wind it until it breaks. And it'll make a pretty stiff wire. Just regular grinding wheel. And then here, you know, laugh if you may, I'll go over here and take me a seat in my comfort of my hood. And here's what I use. I know a lot of you use hand pads. You, you, you do all your pressure flaking, you know, right there on the bulb of your hand. I prefer not to do that, just awkward to me. And uh, so here's what I use. Got a piece of 
pine and this right here I have no idea what it is I think it's part of an old uh, brake shoe or something that's a it's a rubber something other I've used it ever since I started about two years ago got that little slot in it and that helps out a lot whenever you're trying to make the flakes to where they'll travel you know further rather than terminate short if you got that slot in there I'm it works better for me that I have that rather than having something placed in the palm of my hand that terminating short. But that's what I've been using right there. And then I got the trusty rusty notching tool. Not more than a number eight nail flattened out and filed down to a square edge. I got a little bobber on the end of it. I don't ever use that. That's just about a half inch. But I was given another assignment and uh, I wanted to show you what I come up with. Uh, I'm going to have to start back to work coming up and, and I had a, an assignment given me. My card. Anyway, uh, by Paleo Man. And I told him, I said, I, I, I'll accept that as long as I don't have a time frame. But anyway, I got got a little wild last night, and uh, it's too wet to go arrowhead hunting. My wife and I went out to collect the uh, squash and the cucumbers out of the garden before they got too big, and I told her it was going to be muddy. She might have put on her mudders. So she went wading out through there, and I knew she'd sink up. She stepped up in the garden, and I mean, she went up six inches up on her rubber boots, and like not got out. <laughs> you could just hear that going when she pulled out. But anyway, I waited on up in there, and I got what we got, but it's going to be a long time before I can ever get out and uh, wade my fields because, I, you know, I got some good locations, and I want to keep them. And in order for me to keep them, I'm going to have to respect the farmer. And if it was my, if it was my garden, uh, and I ain't earning an income off my garden, but I'd be highly offended if somebody wasn't wading in my garden right now just looking for our heads this is a little bitty uh, horseshoe nail that I use occasionally in some things when I when I want to when I need to all this does is just a uh, underneath this it's a copper tubing this right here is a copper cap a little piece of a uh, rod uh, old fishing rod jammed down in that and of course on this end it's a little socket that you release just like the back cap does. I'll take that off and show you. And all I've done right here is I uh, put me a horseshoe nail in that little socket deal. And I poured some epoxy around that and left it. And what that does is it forms a socket for, their, for these horseshoe nails. Every one of them is made just alike on the back end. And when that gets dull... Well, when that, when that dries up in there, you can take a hammer and knock this end out. And when you knock it out, you've already got you a little pocket of epoxy developed in there that won't change in form. And you just drop you another little nail in there, put your thing back together, throw the insert in the bottom of it that kind of keeps everything wedged up there in the end, and there you go. But anyway, give it an assignment, and... uh. Here's what I come up with. Let's take it out here in the light where we can see it. There's a button based dovetail. You've seen that Gore Tex on that rock back there. Well, this is a piece that I started out with. It was about, I don't know, six inches square, probably, pretty close to square. And it was right on the edge of the rock, which you can see. And you see all that fine little. Uh, looks like glitter well that somehow is surrounding these uh, places these porous places that's interwoven in that material even after you get past the Gore-Tex you'll find this right here woven in the in the good material and when you find that you know you you, you know you're taking a chance on ever being able to use it or not because a lot of that right there is real tough and you can't flake across it it's got these neat little shiny crystals that surrounds that 
porous material. But anyway, here's what we come up with. You can barely see that. It's still raining, so. But that measured four and a quarter. And it's an inch and three quarters wide. I was really well pleased with that piece. I can't see the flaking on it myself. I don't know if you can or not. Turned out real thin. But there is my most recent assignment. And I told Paleo Man I'm fixing to start back to work, so I may not be able to take on another assignment. But when I got this one, I was anxious to get started on it. And I, just that way, I don't like anything hanging over me. Even when it's a hobby, I make a job out of it. That's probably a, the best dovetail I've ever made. I'd go berserk if I found that out somewhere in the field. But anyway, that's the latest creation. Can't see nothing out here. Boy, I'd like to see that laying in the mud, wouldn't you? Not that one, but one like it that they made. But anyway, there you go, paleo man. Whatever you think, that was fun.